Hello guys, good day. Welcome to another video lecture in ACC 311, Income Taxation. In this video lecture, we are to discuss about taxation on corporations. So our objective for this video lecture is to determine the procedures in computing for the taxable income and eventually the tax due of the different types of corporations. Okay, let's start our discussion by defining what is a corporation. So Corporation is an artificial being created by operation of law, having the right of succession in the powers, attributes, and properties expressly authorized by law or incident to its existence. So it is the definition according to the corporate corporation law. But again, corporation is one of the different types of taxpayers that again is enforced to pay taxes to the government. Now, when we talk about corporation in terms of taxation, corporations are also divided into different kinds. We have two major types of corporation, namely domestic corporation and foreign corporation. So when we talk about domestic corporation, these are corporations which are incorporated under the Philippine laws. So that means if it is not incorporated under the Philippine laws, then therefore these are considered as a foreign corporation. So there's a lot of um, domestic and foreign corporation that are operating in the Philippines right now. To name a few, example of a domestic corporation are first Jollibee, San Miguel Corporation, and ABS-CBN Corporation, while foreign corporation includes McDonald's and other types of foreign corporation. Okay, so foreign corporation is also being subdivided into two. So, foreign corporation includes resident foreign corporation and non-resident foreign corporation. So, just like in an individual taxation, it is important for us to determine the source of income of a corporate ta taxpayer, whether within the Philippines or without, because not all corporate taxpayers are taxed on all their income, as illustrated above. So, again, if the taxpayer is a domestic corporation, just like a resident citizen, it is taxable on its income within and outside the Philippines. So all of its income, wherever earned, as long as the corporation is a domestic corporation, then therefore it will be taxed by the Philippine government. However, if it's a foreign corporation, regardless if it's a resident or non-resident, it will only be taxable on its income within the Philippines. Okay? So... The reason, again, of determining the classification of these corporations is, again, their taxability. Their taxability differs on what type of corporation they belong. Okay, let's proceed with the types of income that a corporation may earn. First is obviously basic income and passive income. So basic income that can be earned by a corporation is... Um, obviously, coming from the operation of business because a corporation cannot earn a compensation income nor cannot earn professional income. So therefore, the only source of a corporation that is basic is um, only income from operation of business. And we also have your passive income. So just like your individual taxpayers, corporate taxpayers may also earn passive income. And as we have discussed in the individual taxation, if it has or if a taxpayer has a passive income, passive income will be taxed separately and will not be combined with your basic income. Okay? Now, let's proceed with the format of computation, guys. This will be... The format of computation regardless if the corporation is a domestic or a foreign corporation. But again, you just need to make sure that if it's a domestic corporation, all of its income, wherever it is earned, is um, presented. And then if it's a um, foreign corporation, only those income that is earned in the Philippines will only be taxed. Okay, So we have here your sales or revenue, receipts or fees or whatever income that is being called, uh, whatever term being called for that income, less cost of sales or cost of service to compute for your gross income from operations, 
add non-operating and taxable other income, all non-operating and taxable income which is not subject to final tax to compute for your total gross income. And then deduct guys, your deductions, allowable deductions. So just like your individual taxpayers, corporate taxpayers can also claim their deductions in two ways. They may claim their expenses th through itemized deduction or they could uh, claim through optional standard deduction. But again, we have a bit of difference as to how are we going to compete for OSD this time because optional standard deduction is... Um, different in terms of um, corporation. Iba ang computation ng OSD if the taxpayer is a corporation and iba din ang OSD if the, corporate, if the taxpayer is an individual. So later on, we will discuss the difference between these two computations. So after um, computing the taxable income or ap after deducting your total deductions towards your total gross income, you can now compute for your taxable income. And this time, Unlike with your individual taxpayer, we will no longer use the tax table in computing for the regular corporate income tax. But instead, we will use the corporate tax rate of 30%. Okay, So that 30% is constant. That is a corporate tax rate that is used to compute for the tax due for corporations. So this will be our format of computation that will be used in our succeeding illustrations pertaining to the computation of taxable income and tax due eventually. Now, we also have here the list of passive income that a corporation may earn. See, passive income, guys, the list of passive income that a domestic corporation may earn has somehow um, similarities with those passive income that can be earned by an individual taxpayer. It's just that the list is now shortened because there are passive income which cannot be applied or which cannot be earned by a domestic corporation. Okay, so to start in the list, we have here interest income on any current bank deposit or deposit substitute that is 20% subject to final tax. And then royalties of all types within the Philippines that is also subject to 20%. 20%. Unlike in the individual taxpayers, your royalties is being divided into two. We have general royalty and um, royalty for books, literary, and musical composition. But in domestic or in a corporation, your royalties are, are no longer divided into two. All types of royalties is now subject to 20%. Obviously, within the Philippines, because if it's royalties earned abroad, that will still be um, considered as an active as an active income or as a, or as a basic income. Another is interest income from foreign currency deposit system that is subject to fifteen percent, and dividends received from another domestic corporation that is subject to exemption. Again, if a domestic corporation receives a dividend, cash dividend or property dividend from another domestic cor domestic corporation, then it will be subject to exemption. It is um, what we call the inter-company transfer of dividends. So that is subject to exemption. Another, guys, is your depository bank. We have interest income on foreign currency deposit from transaction with non-residents or offshore banking units, and etc. that is subject to exemption, and interest income on foreign currency loans granted to residents other than um, offshore banking units will be subject to 10% final tax. So these tax rates of passive income is applicable for both domestic and resident foreign corporation. Let's proceed with the capital gains for domestic and resident foreign corporations. So, walang pinagkaiba. No? There's no difference in the computation of our capital gains did to a kay individual taxpayer. Or the manner on how we computed capital gains tax in our individual taxpayer will still be the same procedure that will be used in computing for the CGT for a corporation. So we still have two types of capital gains. First is capital gains on sale of shares of stocks not traded through local stock exchange, which is subject to 15% of your net capital gains. And 
CGT on sale of real properties in the Philippines held as capital asset, which is subject to 6% based on um, based on fair market value or zonal value, whichever is higher. Or if it's made or if the sale is made to the government or to government-owned and controlled corporations, the taxpayer also has a, an option to either be taxed at 6% or um, tax six uh, percent or hindi ito graduated but um, based on 30% na tax rate. Okay, now let's proceed with the passive income for a non-resident foreign corporation. For non-resident foreign corporation, guys, we only have two types of passive income that can be taxed for a non-resident foreign corporation. So we have interest on foreign loans. That is subject to 20% final tax and intercorporate dividends received from a domestic corporation. Earlier, if a domestic corporation earns a dividend from another domestic corporation that is subject to exemption. However, if the recipient of a domestic corporation is a non-resident foreign corporation, then therefore, it will be subject to 15% final tax. However, it is subject to a condition that the domicile country of NRFC allows a 15% tax credit due to NRFC taxes deemed paid in the Philippines. Otherwise, dividends will be taxed at 30% or regular corporate income tax. Again, if the domicile of the non-resident foreign corporation does not impose any tax on dividends received from foreign sources, therefore, preferential tax rate is 15% on intercorporate dividends will apply. So this is actually example of a treaty where two nations are um, agreeing with one um, condition that a particular country will not be taxing another country if there is um, a particular happening with each country. So that's again what we call reciprocity rule. Another, we also have capital gains, guys. So capital gains is also uh, non-resident foreign corporation will also be paying capital gains. That is still capital gains on sale of shares not traded through local stock exchange. Still, that is 15% based on capital gains. And sale of, sale of real property in the Philippines held as capital asset. But this time, it is subject to 30%. Okay, 30%. So those are the important na mga considerations that we need to remember if we are to compute for the tax due for, ano, for a corporation that is a domestic, resident, or non-resident foreign corporation. Now this time, let's proceed with illustrations in computing for the taxable income and tax due. So this time we have illustration for a domestic corporation. Let's have J. Jumpflig. A domestic corporation has the following data on its income and expenses for 2019. So it has gross income in the Philippines and in US for 7 and 5 million respectively. Business expenses in the Philippines and US as well of 2 million and 1 million respectively. It has royalties on Philippine copyrights, 500,000. Interest on time deposits in PNB Manila, Philippines, 100,000. And payments for the first three quarters for 100,000. By the way, guys, I'd like to reiterate that um, all passive income that is earned by a domestic corporation abroad, again, will still be considered as a basic income. Okay? All passive income that is earned by a domestic corporation abroad will still be considered as a basic income. Just like the rule that we had in our individual taxation na all passive income earned by a resident citizen abroad will be construed as a basic income here in the Philippines. Okay? So let's compute this time the taxable income. So again, we have basic income of gross income from business and we have um, final tax or um, passive income of royalties and interest on time deposits. Okay, so let's compute for the taxable income. So again, you just need to compute for the taxable income by um, adding all the gross income, worldwide gross income. So that's 7 million plus 5 million. So we have 12 million um, worldwide gross business income less allowable deductions. Again, allowable deductions of 3 million. So therefore, your total taxable income will be 9 million. And then, we have a tax due. Sorry, 
we have a taxable income of 9 million, multiply it by 30% our CIT or regular corporate income tax rate na 30%. So therefore, your tax due will be 2.7 million. Less payments made for the first three quarters, which is 100,000. So therefore, the total tax payable for this year will be 2.6 million. Take note, guys, that if the taxpayer is a corporation, then therefore, income tax will be paid every quarter. So that is why um, it's assumed that it is the fourth quarter that is being paid for this particular computation. So we have a tax due of um, 2.7 million and a tax payable of 2.6 million. Okay. This time, what if the taxpayer or the corporate taxpayer opted to use optional standard deduction? Okay. What is the difference this time with the use of OSD kung individual and kay corporation? Again, as a reminder, let me just reiterate to you the rule in computing for the OSD. OSD, guys, if it's on the point of view of an individual taxpayer, it is 40% based on gross sales. Okay, 40% based on gross sales. However, if the taxpayer is um, corporation, in the case of a corporate taxpayer, the OSD allowed shall be in an amount not exceeding 40% of their gross income. And the gross income, guys, shall mean the gross sales, less sales returns, discounts, and allowances, and cost of goods sold. Okay, unlike with OSD, na ang basis na to will be the gross sales. But here, if the taxpayer is a corporation, your 40% will be multiplied sa, sa inyohang gross income, which is your net sales minus your cost of goods sold or cost of um, service. Okay, so let's have an example. What if the taxpayer opted to use optional standard deduction? Compute for the tax due. Okay, the following relates to its results of operations. We have gross sales of 4 million, sales returns and allowances of 800,000, sales discounts of 50, cost of sales of 2.5 million, recorded administrative and selling expenses of 760,000. So this is the assumed itemized expenses and dividend from a domestic corporation. So again, we have the dividend from a domestic corporation. So assumption here that Gene Company is a domestic corporation receiving a dividend from another domestic corporation. So therefore, this 50,000 will be subject to exemption. It will not be subjected to tax whether it's basic or passive. Now this time, let's compute first for the taxable income. Okay, taxable income. So let's start with our gross sales, guys, na 4 million, less sales adjustments of sales returns and allowances and sales discounts of 100,000 and 50,000 respectively. So that's why we have a total sales adjustment of 150,000. So that gives us net sales of 3 million, 850,000 less cost of sales na 2 million 500,000. So therefore, your gross income will be 1,350,000. So since again, the taxpayer is a corporation, there, then therefore, your 40% will be multiplied to your gross income. So we have 1,350,000 times 40%. So we have an OSD or optional standard deduction of 540,000. So it will be deducted sa ang gross income na 1,350,000. So that gives us a taxable income of 810. Multiply it by our 30% na um, tax rate. So therefore, your tax due, guys, will be 243000 So note, unlike in the computation of taxable income under OSD for individual taxation, cost of sales is deducted to compute the gross income for the corporate taxpayer. Because dito as a individual taxpayer, guys, we, do not, we did not um, deduct your cost of goods sold in computing for your taxable income. Okay, and I also want you to compare, guys, what if the taxpayer opted to use itemized deductions, whichever, which is better, okay? Is it to use OSD or to use itemized deduction? So use itemized deduction of 760,000, okay? Use 760,000 and then comment down below on which is better, whether to use itemized deduction or to use optional standard deduction, okay? I'll be rooting for your answers. Okay, let's proceed. 
Okay, so those are sample um, questions pertaining to a domestic corporation. Now, this time, let's proceed to a proprietary non-profit educational institution and hospital. So this is another type of corporation that is special. Okay, proprietary non-profit educational and institution Ah, uh, pro non-profit educational institution and hospital. So when we talk about proprietary, it means private, okay? And then non-profit, that means no net income or asset accrues to any member or specific person. Or all net income or assets are devoted to the institution's purposes and all its activities conducted not for profit. So again, since it is non-profit, the expected proceeds for whatever activities this educational institution and hospital institution may derive um, no nothing of this income or revenue will be distributed sa ilahang members or sa kanilang mga um, stakeholders but instead it will be used in the day-to-day -day activities or operation or um, realization of the purpose of this non-profit educational institution and hospital okay so um, when we talk also about proprietary educational institution, it refers to any private school maintained by private individuals with an issued permit from DEX or CHED or even TESDA. So if the corporation is proprietary, non-profit educational institution, or hospital, then we have two options, guys. Or We have two options on how are we going to tax these types of corporation. It's either to use 10%. Or to use the regular corporate income tax rate of 30%. 10% of taxable income except for passive income or 30% on entire taxable income if gross income from unrelated trade or activities exceeds 50% of the total gross income. Okay. When are we going to use 10% and 30%? Okay. Requisites to be entitled to reduce 10%. Okay, to reduce the 10 to have you to use the 10% reduced corporate income tax the corporation must be both proprietary and non-profit again that's private and non-profit meaning no income of it will be distributed to any member and income from unrelated activities guys must not exceed 50% of the total gross income Okay, that should be very clear that um, unrelated activities must not exceed 50% of the total gross income. Okay, when we talk about unrelated trade, business, or activity, it means any trade, business, or other activity, the conduct of which is not substantially related to the exercise or performance by such educational institution or hospital from its primary purpose of function. So, dapat, it should not exceed 50% para the corporation, the institution, hospital institution, or educational institution can use the 10%. Okay, let's have an example. We have here Abacada University, a non-profit educational institution, reported the following during the year. Okay, we have gross income and deductions from related activities and unrelated activities. So it has a total gross income of 3.2 million combined gross income from related and unrelated activities less total combined deductions of 1.9 million. Therefore, we have a total net income of 1.3 million. So to compute for the tax due, guys, obviously we just need to multiply it by uh, no, the net you multiply the net income by 30% or 10%. But this time, the first step, guys, is to determine which tax rate will be used, either the 10% or the 30%. So let's have the predominance test first to determine whether the educational institution is qualified to use 10%. Okay, what was our basis if the unrelated income is not exceeding 50% of the total gross income? So we have total unrelated activities income na 1.5 million over our total gross income na 3.2 million so that only gives us 41.66% so therefore it qualifies it it is qualified to use the 10% tax rate because the income from unrelated activities does not exceed 
50%. So therefore, the tax rate that we will be using will be 10%. So simply, you have the taxable income or the tax or net income of 1.3 million, multiply it by the tax rate of 10% to compute for the tax due. So therefore, the tax due of Abacada University will be 130,000. Okay, 130,000. Another example we have here, Romantic Doctor Hospital, a non-profit hospital institution, reported the following during the year. So it also have uh, related activities and unrelated activities. So it has a total gross income from combined activities of 5.1 million with a total deductions of 1.9 million, giving a total net income of 3.2. So again, first step is do the predominance test where your unrelated activities is 3.5 million over your total activities na 5.1. So that means we have 68.63. So obviously, guys, it exceeds already the 50% threshold. So since it exceeds the 50% threshold, your 3.2 your 3 million taxable income will be taxed using the 30% tax rate. Okay? Therefore, your tax due for Romantic Doctor Hospital will be 900 60,000. Okay, tax due for Romantic Doctor Hospital is 960,000. Okay, those are um, the basic considerations for a domestic corporation. Okay, this time let's proceed with um, sample illustrations for our resident foreign corporation. Again, if it's a resident foreign corporation or non-resident foreign corporation, these are only corporations who are taxed with their income within the Philippines lang. Okay, from all sources within the Philippines. They are only taxed with their, so, with their income within the Philippines. So assuming that J Jump League is a resident foreign corporation, has the following data on its income and expenses for 2018. So let's compute for the taxable income and tax due. So since again, guys, um, the taxpayer here is already a non-resident or a resident foreign corporation. So therefore, it will only be taxable on its income within the Philippines lang. So gross business income in the Philippines of 7 million less deductions in the Philippines of 2 million. So therefore, we have a taxable income of 5 million. Multiply it by our tax rate, not 30. So therefore, we have tax due of 1.5 million. Tax due of 1.5 million less payments for the last three quarters. So that is 100,000. So therefore, tax payable for this particular taxpayer will be 1.4 million. Since again, the taxpayer is a resident foreign corporation, therefore, it is taxable on their income only within the Philippines and is allowed to deduct business expenses. Okay, so let's proceed with um, specific um, corporation, a specific operation of a resident foreign corporation. So if a resident foreign corporation, guys, is related into international career, international career, so that will be subjected to 2.5% gross Philippine billings. Okay, international carrier that is subject to 2.5% based on gross Philippine billings. Gross Philippine billings is the gross revenue derived from carriage of persons, excess baggage, cargo, and mail. And it is only from originate, it only originates from Philippines and a continuous and uninterrupted flight, okay? So meaning, katong na yung mga connecting flight, then that will not be subject to international carrier up to, ano lang, up to, ano, the flight where it is uninterrupted. So irrespective of place of sale and payment of ticket or passage of documents, okay? Regardless wherever it was sold, the ticket was sold, but again, as long as it originates from the Philippines to any other part of the world, with continuous and un uninterrupted flight, then therefore, it will be subject to international carrier of 2.5. It will be considered as international carrier and subject to 2.5% gross Philippine billings. Passenger flights from any point in the Philippines and back, portion of revenue pertaining to the return trip to the Philippines is not um, is not part of your gross Philippine billings. So if it's round, if it's a round trip ticket, guys, only ano, return trip ticket. So only um, uh, that uh, the only thing that is 
um, taxed for 2.5% is only from the Philippines to the foreign country. Na excluding ang from foreign country uh, going back to the Philippines. Another is um, branch profit remittances. So tax rate is 15% of total profits applied or earmarked for remittance to the head office without any deduction for the tax component. So except those registered with PESA. Not treated as branch profits, guys, is a passive income, remuneration for technical services, salaries and wages, and premiums, annuities, emoluments, and other periodic or casual gains, profits, income, and capital gains. Gains, Except if the above are connected with the conduct of a foreign corporation's trade or business in the Philippines. So when we talk about branch profit remittances, it's when... Um, a, a branch of a foreign corporation operates here in the Philippines and at the same time, they will be remitting their net income to the head office. So such remittance will again be subject to 15% branch profit remittance or branch remittance tax. That is aside pa sa ano, RCIT nila guys. So aside from the 30% na regular corporate income tax, they will still be paying 15% na branch profit remittances okay this time let's have an, an illustration for a non-resident foreign corporation non-resident foreign corporation foreign corporation that transacts business on the philippines independently of its branch in the country the principal agent relationship is set aside the foreign corporation is considered a non-resident foreign corporation for that isolated and independent transaction. So again, if the corporation is non-resident foreign corporation, it will be subject to 20% based on gross income. They are not allowed to deduct allowable business expenses in the Philippines. Even in the Philippines, expenses they have incurred in the Philippines will not as well be allowed to be deducted. So just like how we computed the tax due for a non-resident alien not engaged to trade in business sa ato ang individual taxation, they are not also allowed to deduct business expenses. Okay, for example, J. Jam Fleek, a non-resident foreign corporation, has the same data, but this time, the corporation is considered non-resident foreign corporation. So therefore, to compute for your tax due, guys, we just simply multiply your gross income of 7 million because automatically your gross income becomes your taxable income because the corporation will now will not be allowed to will not be allowed to deduct allowable expenses so therefore we have a taxable income of 7 million times 30 percent so therefore your tax due will be 2.1 million and again guys royalties in interest in deposits are still subject to final tax so since, again, the taxpayer is a non-resident foreign corporation, it is only taxable on its income within the Philippines but is not allowed to deduct business expenses. Okay, let's proceed with the last one. We have um, special corporations. We have special corporations. Special corporations includes non-resident cinematographic film owner, lessor, or distributor. If this is the type of corporation that is operating in the Philippines, they are subject to 25% of gross income from all sources within the Philippines. Okay, cinematographic film owner, lessor, or distributor. So just like um, any distributors of um, foreign films in the Philippines, they are taxed with 25% based on gross income from all, um, all sources within the Philippines. Another is non-resident owner or lessor of a vessel chartered by a Philippine national. So lessor of vessel, that is 4.5%. Pero if you are owner or lessor of an aircraft, machineries, and other equipments, that is subject to 7.5% based on gross rentals, okay? Take note that the basis is gross rentals, meaning before any deductions. And then also, our discussion earlier for proprietary nonprofit educational institution in hospitals, so you have 10% taxable income only and only if the 
um, the educational institution or hospital again qualifies the threshold and then resident international carrier just the ones we have mentioned earlier so that is 2.5 percent based on gross philippine billings so again it only includes those routes no from the philippines to any other points of the world continuously and uninterrupted uninterruptedly okay these are revenues from um, excess baggage carriage of cargo and passengers or even including I know males we also have ROHQ 10% of Philippine taxable income RAHQ that is ROHQ this is regional operating headquarters that is 10% of Philippine taxable income pero if it's only regional area headquarters they are exempted since they do not operate man so they are exempted. Pero if it's ROHQ, then therefore they have operation. So therefore, they are subject to 10% based on Philippine taxable income. And then we also have here, ano guys, domestic and resident foreign depository banks or FCDUs. Interest income from foreign currency transactions with non-residents are exempted. Interest income on foreign currency transactions granted to residents other than offshore banking units that is subject to 10% final tax. And also lastly, offshore banking units, income from foreign currency transactions with non-residents other than offshore banking units or local commercial banks that is exempted and income from foreign currency loans granted to residents other than offshore banking units and local commercial banks that is subject to 10% final tax. I'd like also to add, guys, in your special corporations, those corporations that is related in the government, like our government-owned and controlled corporations. So just like what we have discussed in the basic principles of taxation, as long as there is no specific rule that exempts a particular taxpayer, then therefore such taxpayer is really um, subject to tax, uh, subject to pay tax. But currently, there are for GOCCs that is exempted to pay taxable uh, tax due from its income before in our in, uh, before train law there were five but after train law after the effectivity of train law naging apat na lang sila from Lima like GSIS SSS PhilHealth and Local Water District plus PCSO PCSO before were still um, tax exempt, but this time under train law, PCSO is already subject to tax, okay, based on ano, their income. So, again, sa train law, guys, they apat na lang ang exempted na government owned and controlled corporations. They are SSS, GSIS, PhilHealth, and Local Water District. Okay, so I think that would be the end of our lecture for individual, uh, for corporate taxation. But we will have a part two discussion for our corporate taxation. This time naman, or in that video lecture naman, we will focus on other ways of computing for tax due. No? Unlike using regular corporate income tax, what are other ways to compute for the tax due of a corporation so in our next video lecture we will be discussing about minimum corporate income tax we will be discussing about gross income tax and we will also be discussing about the computation of um, improperly accumulated earnings tax or IAAT and all other um, topics related to corporate taxation so once again um, this is our lecture in ACC 311. So that's it for our video lecture. Thank you for listening and God bless.